All right, everybody, today I'm going to show you how to photo scan models from Games Workshop and or a 3D turntable. So the first thing, we're using Metashape to do this. You can get a 30-day free trial by downloading it from the website. So you want to go to File, Import. If you're using a video, go to Video. And I'm just going to get one right here. I've never done this one before, so it'll be the first time. So this is where you want to set it. If you download a video from YouTube, you don't need the whole video. You just need the actual part where the turntable is. So at the beginning, you hit Current Position. All right, and then you let it run, drag to the end. Wherever the turntable stops, you hit current position. You have start and end. Frame step, I found anywhere between 15 and 20 works well. For slower videos, um, you want about 10, 15. For um, faster, or sorry, for slower videos, you want a higher number. For faster videos, you want a lower number. So in this case, we're gonna use about 20. Then you go to your output folder, and we're just gonna call this Horizon Rider Spear. Select folder and then hit OK. Now it'll take a little bit to run, um, so we'll let it go. All right, so we're in. So now if you go to the photo section down here, uh, you'll see we have a whole bunch of photos. So it took individual snaps as this thing's rotating around. Now you can use this as is, but what I like to do is crop out the background. If it's white, it's really easy. If it's colored, it's still pretty easy. So you go to photo, you'll have two things, magic wand for W and then um, We'll use that. So you hit W on your keyboard and you click. You'll see the background is selected. So I hold the control key and click one more time. This refines it. And then I press control, shift, and A, which masks the selection. So you'll see it's all gray. So now we only get the actual model itself. And there's some stuff in the inside, but that's okay. So I go through this and I do the entire frame. This is why I don't want too many frames because it'll take forever. But again, you can do it. So we're just gonna run through this real quick. All right, now everything's grayed out. Now, if you were using a turntable, for example, from the Games Workshop website, um, if you, like, let's click on one here, we'll go to Age of Sigmar, and we're going to Order, and then we're going to Internet Deepkin. Let's say you wanted to, I don't know, do one of these guys. So if you click on one of their 360s, you right-click, press Copy Image Address, and you paste it. And you'll see it's got this one here. And if you change the one, that will change the image that you're looking at. So what I do is I have a spreadsheet um, and it pretty much looks like this, where I will paste or copy everything right before the number, paste it in, and then drag it down. And then you'll get all these different links, which have all just the different numbers. So I copy these and I use a program, a little Chrome thing called Tab Save. You hit the edit button, paste the links in, and download the pictures. This will download all the pictures real fast. And then when you're in Metashape, you can go to File or Workflow, Add Photos, and you can add the photos in. But in this case, I'm using a video, so the photos came from there. Okay, so we got the photos in and it got the backgrounds cropped. Next, you go to Workflow, Align Photos. You always want this at highest, you always want it at source. In the advanced, your tie point limit should be about 4,000, and I usually have adaptive camera model fitting on. If it doesn't work, you can sometimes click this guided image matching as well. So you press OK, and it'll say detecting points. It'll just go through and run through the process. Done, if you go to model, um, you'll have this little thing. You use the middle mouse button to move around, and then you can click the little rotate thing to rotate around. Now one thing you wanna do, these photos should always be in a circle like this, assuming that you have a 360 degree rotation. You also wanna make sure that your model's not cut off. This box can sometimes cut off your model, the little gray box. If it does, you can click this button, resize region, and you have these little handles here. You just drag them a little bit, just to make your box a bit bigger. Then you move around, make sure nothing's cut off. See at the end here, it looks like it might get cut off, so we're gonna increase that. All right, so there we go. It looks like we're ready for the next step. So the next step is where we generate a dense mesh. This is a, a very fine, uh, a loose mesh. So then you go to Model, or Workflow, Build Dense Mesh, Ultra High, Mild, Calculate Point Colors, hit OK. That'll take a little while, and it'll calculate the uh, dense mesh, and we'll go from there. We're done now, um, so if you hit this dense mesh button, you'll see that we've got a pretty good representation of our model right now. Uh, now one thing you can do to make it even better is clean it up. So sometimes, you see how we took out the background? There's nothing around here, but at the inside we didn't take out the background in here. So what we're going to want to do, and sometimes this little ball can be a little mysterious, you just kind of move around with the middle mouse button until it centers itself. And you zoom in real close here, and you'll see we have all this junk in here. So you hit this 
uh, button right here. I like the freeform selection. You left click and hold and just drag your mouse around and select all of those points in there and then just press delete. It takes a little bit uh, on complex models. This can take a while, but with luck, you don't have to do it too much. And again, you don't have to do it. It just makes the scan a little better. So we're gonna clean that up. Maybe rotate a little bit around. I can see there's some sort of junk in here. Let's just get rid of that. And this is actually a pretty complex model uh, in reality. Horses are pretty ridiculous. So you see we've got some stuff in here too. So let's just go in here real quick, clean it up. We're not gonna worry about the base at all. Um, so that's okay. And again, the longer you spend, the better your result's gonna be. But again, remember, we're looking at it really close here. Uh, most people will be looking at it from far away. All right, so that looks pretty good. Maybe some stuff there, a little stuff there. Weapon seems fine. All right, so I think we're ready for the next step. So again, you rotate around and make sure everything looks good. You don't have any other issues. I, don't know, I see a little, little junk right here I wanna get rid of, so let's just clean that up. Yeah, maybe a little right there, okay. So next you go to model, or sorry, workflow, build mesh. Use your dense cloud, arbitrary 3D. Now in tabletop simulator, this cannot be above 30,000. 25,000 is really high. I like to use it, it gives me pretty good results. In advance, I just have ver the, the basic defaults. You hit okay, and it'll generate the mesh. And then you wait a little bit. All right, so it's done uh, generating the mesh. So if you hit this little uh, pyramid button and you go to model solid, you'll see what your mesh looks like. But it's not good yet. We need to do one more thing. So you go to um, workflow, build texture, uh, diffuse map, image, generic, mosaic. If it's a small model, I do 1024 like a soldier or horseman. If it's a big model like smog or a giant demon, I, I do 2048. In advanced, I just have enable hole filling and enable ghosting filter. Hit OK and it'll do its thing. So we'll wait a little bit longer. All right, so our model has finished being textured. You can check it by hitting the pyramid, going to model texture, and if you hit the little uh, arrow thing, you can fly around your model. It looks pretty good. So the next step and the last one in Metashape is you go to File, Export, Export Model. And then you just search uh, for wherever your folder is, and let's call this Haradrum Rider with Spear. All right, and then you can leave all this as default and hit OK. So this exports your model, and what it will give you in the end uh, is something like this. Let's go to uh, here, user videos, Haradrum Rider with Spear. So it'll actually give you two files, the Haradrum Rider MTL and then the um, OBJ file. Now, if you're just helping and you don't have access to a 3D program, take these three files, the texture file, the MTL file, and the OBJ file, and send them to who is ever doing a 3D model. If, however, though, you want to take it a step further and you have access to Blender, which is a free 3D software, or 3ds Max, you can uh, finish the process. So let's go into 3ds Max real quick. All right, so this is something else I was working on previously, so we're just going to go ahead and hide that. So go to File, Import, Merge, and you're going to do the same thing in Blender. And you want to um, import or merge your model. So go to your OBJ file and OK. Press Import, and you want to keep it at triangles. Press OK, just renaming it. So here we go, we're in 3D. So the one thing we want to do is set the pivot point to be in the center of the model for now. The reason we want to do that is we're going to use the Move tool and the Rotate tool just to make it so this thing is perfectly flat. We're just trying to make this a flat base. All right, so I'm just looking at different viewports. And again, in Blender, it's gonna be a little bit different process, but you're gonna use the exact same tools. All right, so now go into your top view and you wanna drag this. Now I know this is a 40 millimeter base. So what I'm gonna do here is make a basic cylinder. So in Blender, there's a different way to do it, but in 3ds Max, you just make a cylinder and then you go to radius. And again, the radius is half the diameter, so you put 20 millimeters and that makes your cylinder. And I'm only using this to size it. So I bring this guy over, I use the scale tool and I size it so it's just the right size. And one thing to note is in 3ds Max, I have my units set to millimeters. Now that is important because it'll come in perfectly sized in Tabletop Simulator, otherwise you may have to play with it a little bit. Now the way I like to do things is I don't have the base in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead into the edit mode and just delete all the base. And again, if you're just importing a basic model, you don't really have to do this. Um, but it looks much better if you keep things kind of consistent. And again, I'm just selecting with a freeform selection tool, just like we did in the other program. All right, and we're just gonna get rid of all of that base. That looks pretty good to me. And again, you know, we're really close. Uh, when you're playing with this in Tabletop Simulator, you could be very far away. 
So the next thing um, is not quite as important, but I still like to do it. You bring your model down and bring it right to where the sort of feet and the base are right at the origin point. And then when you pivot, affect your pivot and bring your pivot directly uh, to the origin point as well. Uh, this is pretty important uh, just because it'll align everything when you uh, import the model to Tabletop Simulator. All right, so we're ready to import into Tabletop Simulator. So you go to File, Export, Export Selected, and then we're going to go over here to the Horizon Spear Rider. We're going to call this Horizon Rider with Spear Tabletop Simulator. All right, so we're done there. Let's go into Tabletop Simulator. So here's a mod uh, that I'm working on. Now, um, let's see here. How can I do this the easiest way? <coughs> so what I'm going to do uh, is go to Objects, Components, Custom, and Model. So the model mesh is your OBJ file that you just created. So let's go to uh, whatever this is, Lord of the Rings, user videos, Horizon Rider with Spear, Tabletop Simulator. Cloud, cloud, okay. Diffuse image is gonna be the Horizon Rider with Spear. Now in this case, the collider, I'm basically using a collider that has no thickness or anything like that. Um, you can do this a bunch of different ways. You can just use a box as a collider. Uh, and sometimes it doesn't like to upload, sometimes it does. Um, but <laughs> let's cancel that and try to redo this. All right, it seems like everyone's on Tabletop Simulator, so it's been having some struggles. So I'm just going to go up here and use a collider from somewhere. Let's see, a lot over here. <coughs> All right, so it looks like everything's ready. So I have a figurine, material is cardboard. So here we go. Now we have our thing here. Um, so the model is now in Tabletop Simulator. Now the one thing we're going to do that's a little different is we're going to give it a base. Um, so I didn't make the base. I, I deleted the base because this is how I do it. Um, so I'm going to go to Objects, Components, uh, Custom, Model. And then in here, I'm going to again make this cardboard, uh, make this a figurine, and go to Model Mesh up here and this is going to be a 40 millimeter base somewhere in here here it is 40 millimeter base and then I'm going to use the same thing as the collider and the diffuse image uh, I have a base texture and again you can take one of these from the existing mod um, or you can do whatever you like but either way it's just it's just a basic base a circle with a texture on it so now what we'll do is just drop the little horse on top of the base all right, make sure it looks like it's pretty well centered. And then Tabletop Simulator recently came out with a new uh, tool called the Attach Tool. Go to Combine, Attach, hover over the base, click and drag onto the model. Go to your hand tool, and there you go. You press e, e and Q, you can rotate your model, and you have a perfectly formatted model ready for the tabletop. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out. Um, and, but again, you know, this is the full process. It took. Uh, what, 19 minutes from start to finish with all the processing time for one model. If you use images instead of videos, it'll be significantly faster. So that's it. I'll see you guys next time.